Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. Hello, everyone. Welcome to SiliconANGLE, Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. We're here live in Las Vegas, Nevada for HP Discover 2014, all the groundbreaking action in IT, cloud, mobile, social. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder and chief analyst at Wikibon.org. Our next guest is Seamus Dunn, VP of Technology Services Support at Hewlett Packard. Welcome back Thank to The you Cube. Done. You've been on before? Yes, a few times. <laughs> Good to be back. So tell us what's going on. Obviously, HP is in the center of all the action. And, um, you know, all across the board, big player in the industry, the business is changing significantly, and one of the most shocking and uh, disruptions that's really rocking the world is around cloud, and how cloud is, is shoehorning into the processes immediately within large enterprises and businesses. Not replacing anything, so to speak, it's a shift, coexistence, a lot of complicated kind of mechanics, uh -huh. but at the end of the day, that's the number one demand point for customers, so give us your take on that. Where does that cloud fit in that uh, disruption and execution? Well, it's good to be back, first of all, thank you. The, uh, well, our point of view you know, on HP is, is a, it's a hybrid world, it's hybrid IT. We've already got a strong position in a private cloud on-premise, and I, I can mention a few things we're doing there. But with the announcements of HP Helion and the various aspects of that, uh, we've also kind of built some service arrangements that go beyond your on-premise IT. And uh, with, with Things like flexible capacity, data center care, we're also adding in things like hybrid cloud support. So we can take IT deployments that are on your premise, um, build kind of flexible arrangements around them, like with flexible capacity, give you kind of the known enterprise grade support, help for deployment, and support throughout the life cycle. And then as you move workloads out uh, externally, uh, put, a, put a support arrangement around that whole whole thing that's similar to on-premise with HP Helion, uh, HP Cloud System, and then with various platforms externally, whatever service providers you want to use externally, kind of make that a, a continuum of support arrangements. So we're building kind of people, skills, tools, some, some instrumentation around it to, uh, to monitor and so on. So I've got to ask you the open source question. One of the things we, we discussed heavily at the OpenStack Summit and recently at uh, the Cube was at Hadoop Summit in, in uh -huh. Silicon Valley is the role of open source. How does that play into your team and then also your customers? And, and, and what has that changed, if anything, the game? And what's, made, what's, what's been different about how you guys use that to deliver the solutions? Well, I, I, you know, I hope, hopefully you'll get to speak to some of our, our HP Helion business unit guys this, this week. But our whole point of view is open industry standards and embracing open source. So you know that we're one of the biggest contributors to the uh, OpenStack uh, uh, community. And HP Helion is built around the, um, the, the, the whole OS uh, uh, model. And we've actually, as HP are building a distribution for that, we're building a support model around that as well and developing out skills with, uh, with, with, our, with our business unit as they, they uh, deploy uh, Helion. So open source is kind of, supporting open source and building standards around open source is kind of in our, in our DNA. It's kind of a value proposition. I don't think there's anything new or changing that over a long period of time. Sure, so I wonder if I can ask you a question about the flexible capacity. So how does that work? So you install capacity, so you yeah. over-provision essentially, sure. Um, yeah. and then the customer has a key and can turn it on as they like, is that right? The software key? Uh, yeah, it's a little more, a little more than that. I mean, so first of all, the thing about flexible capacity, so if you think about what uh, CIOs, CXOs have to face, you know, they're, they're, they have demands for like speed, flexibility, uh, deploy through DevOps into production very quickly, and uh, you know the demand for their business is usually, the public cloud does all that, why aren't you using it? So we're really with flexible capacity, what we're doing is putting an arrangement around your on-premise infrastructure, probably built as a private cloud, and giving you the public cloud dynamics and economics of flexibility, uh, agility, elasticity of your, your pricing, ma making it less of a big capital investment for you. And then to, to your question, we're, we're putting not just the economics around it, then we'll, we'll change our whole purchasing uh, uh, requirements. So we'll deploy capital that we'll retain title to 
you use and pay for it as you use. And then as we monitor that, we'll, we'll place more capacity on your, on your site for you, kind of managing your capacity so you don't have to make big jumps of, uh, of capacity. So their book, your customer books that as, a, as an operating expense, is that right? Yeah, typically. You, you typically. own the asset. Yes. HP owns the yep. asset. And you don't necessarily, you're saying, over provision. Uh, you might. We might, yeah. Okay. It depends, you, you, you know, in your capacity plans and we'll monitor your usage and so on. Yeah. So you're essentially replicating the cloud model in a, in a, in a sort of a brute force way, but it's, but it's good, right? For the customer, it doesn't really see the difference. Is that true? Or? That's, a, that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to give you those uh, cloud, <laughs> public cloud economics and dynamics, but with all the benefits of on-premise, with your control, with your security, with your latency. Uh, so you, you're getting on-premise ID with some of the speed, elasticity, and, and, and pricing models of um, you know, going to a public cloud. How popular is that um, uh, uh, sort of flexible capacity option? Incredibly. I mean, you'd be really surprised. I mean, we, we, we really built it out first with the service provider community. Uh, you know, they were scaling out and building so much that it was very attractive to, you know, especially the mid-tier, it's kind of, we started a lot there, then we went to like larger service providers, but now we're, we're, we're expanding the capabilities of it, the metering, the tooling, billing like at a VM level, integrating software and the services into the model. So now enterprises are, are, are starting to, to, to love it. And so it's, it's a snowball effect. I mean, as it's catching hold, it's a longer sales cycle than you know, typically people are used to. So there's a little bit of explaining and selling and a lot of the backups and the infrastructure you got to put in place is, is, is complex at the back end where we, we kind of manage that and keep it from the customers. But as people are starting to understand what it is, it's a snowball effect and, I mean, it's incredibly popular. And, and, and is, is that a, a bespoke service that you charge for or do you get paid as the customer deploys the capacity? In other words, is there a setup fee? Is there, you know, how do I engage? No, we, uh, what, we, what we will do typically, I mean, we'll, some of the arrangements we'll customize for, for our customers' needs, but uh, you know, typically uh, we'll put, we'll use our balance sheet to put the the, the infrastructure, the software, and the deployment services, the consulting if it's required, the support, and we'll put that into a monthly bill. I mean, you pay each month. There's no big setup fee. Uh, that's, that's all aggregated into uh, you know, an arrangement over a period of time. Now, how do you deal with, so Amazon and Google, they cut their prices like every three minutes. Yeah. Right? yeah so how do you deal with that? Is that built in? Is there forward pricing built into the scenario? Or? Well, we, we'll, we'll make an arrangement, uh, you know, for a certain uh, a part of the infrastructure, and uh, you know, we'll price it and make a make a contract like like we would normally do. The you know, then as you want to maybe scale out that arrangement or, or build it, we, you know, we'll we'll come to another uh, you know another pricing agreement. But you know, we we do monitor what you know some competitors are doing in their public cloud and what they bill and how they bill, how they meter it. You know, and there's a lot of apples and oranges comparisons in the, in this. Uh, in this situation, sure. but you know to, what we would say is that there, there's there's only a small premium to pay for a flexible capacity arrangement for the benefit of being on premise and having it private and with the security, the latency, and all the other benefits you get from on premise. But well, we will do a comparison, but it's 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 a modest enough premium to pay. But I mean, essentially, the customers renting and renting is more flexible, but it should be more expensive. It's more expensive to rent a car than it is to own a car yes. unless you just need it for one day. And so. Um, yeah, but, but I think flexible the, capacity, it makes sense, right? You, you, you're, you're absolutely right. I think where the analogy there breaks down a little bit is that we, we know that infrastructure, we know the software, we know how to manage it. So in the end, you'd also get not just all the benefits of a flexible capacity arrangement, but we'll optimize it. We understand it, we know it, we look after it, we optimize it, we make sure it's up to date, it's provisioned. So in the end, the total cost structure is, is actually quite quite good. And that's bundled into the service cost. That's 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 the I'm paying one bill, one line item every month. That's correct. And I can add to it obviously if I need need more. Exactly. That's correct. I mean it's a bill and it's based on your usage, it's metered and it's, That's good, that's yeah. very helpful. Thanks for helping us unpack that. I have yeah, another question now, sort of switching subjects to okay. hybrid IT. If I'm a customer and I got my on-premise and I'm happy, I'm putting in converged infrastructure, I'm trying to replicate you know, the simplicity of the public cloud, and then over here I got some DevOps guys that are, that are doing Amazon or Google yeah. or whatever, you know, Azure. How's that different than what you're calling hybrid IT? Well, I, 
I, I don't know that it is different. I think we got to do a little more and we're planning in some of our arrangements as we build out you know, our infrastructure and our tools and, and instrumentation. We're building, you know, uh, uh, we're building a, a, an approach that's a little more friendly and suitable to DevOps, to, uh, to DevOps people to, to speed up that development cycle and move into production. But I, I don't think it's particularly I'm different. surprised at your answer though, because I, I would have thought you would have said, well, the, the security policy that you have for your on-premise and your, 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 if you're going with the, something like Helion, will be more aligned. Is that true or is that not true? Well, it, it, it will certainly be more, more aligned, but I, I, I think it's, the, the answer to, to that question is it depends on the customer. Uh, right. I think what, what, what we're doing with, with HP Helion is building up a set of partners too, so it's not just an on-premise proposition with an open stack distribution on top of cloud system. Uh, we're also looking at a set of cloud agile, who are cloud agile partners today. Right. If they deploy the Helium platform, we'll then have a, 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 an ecosystem that HP can broker around that you know, will move workloads across that, that ecosystem, but on and off your premises, but on a, on a, on a, on a consistent platform. The, the, you know, the security benefits you know, you know, improve, but they're still, at the end of the day, it's still workloads that are moving in and out of your, 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 your network. Well, let me ask you a question differently. So when you go into an account, on-premise, uh -huh. and you negotiate a security approach, policy, standard, SLA, let's call it a security yep. SLA, you obviously have to commit to that. You're doing a lot of work to, to live up to that. You're HP, you make a promise, you're going to stick to it. Um, what happens oftentimes when we talk to customers is they say, we're happy with that, and then our provider might do a partnership with a public cloud provider, and then we have to negotiate with the public cloud provider to, 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 to get the security SLA, yes. and it's different than what we just spent six months agreeing on. Can you solve that problem? Well, I mean, we, we, can, we can certainly you know, indemnify a bit uh, mm -hmm. what, what we do. The, the, the proposition that we're putting out as a technology services business is that we will take responsibility for that SLA on-premise, off-premise, with whatever service provider you're using, in our service support arrangement. So, so we will, you know, we can't solve a third party's decision, but we can certainly indemnify it on our behalf and we might take that on with some customers. Well, what if I use, what if I use the HP cloud? Does, can that solve the problem? Well, definitely. Of right, course, oh, no, okay. that's a difference. So that's, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I was asking. If you, yeah. if I come to you as a customer, say, okay, I got on premise, I love it, and I want to use Helion. 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 I say Helion, yeah, yeah. everybody else says Helion. Will my security SLA be comparable, substantially identical, identical? But on and off premise? Yes. I, I, I think it'll be substantially identical. Uh, let, let me clarify one thing about Helion. So I think when you're saying Helion, he, Helion's a brand for all of our cloud yeah. uh, Which uh, is product. <laughs> so I think when you're saying Helion, you're thinking about our, our public cloud yes, approach. Right. Helion is also what we will call our open stack distributions, which right. also helps you with your on-premise cloud solution. So, so we, what we are really saying, the benefit of, of a, an approach with Helion, which we're building on with services, is that you have a common, you have a platform on-premise with cloud system using HP Helion's open stack distribution. And then when you go to our public cloud, you've got the very same platform. So uh, your question I know was in security, but for lots of reasons, using that common platform uh, it gives you gives you a lot of benefits about your workload development, what DevOps have to do, and what you deploy in production. And further, we're building an ecosystem that's other cloud providers that will also use the same platform as us. So, Helion is 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 a is a is a is a, is, is a brand that describes our platform for cloud on and off premise and, and with with partners. But essentially, yeah. that is the value proposition that the on-prem and the off-prem is substantially identical in terms of its SLA security, compliance, audit, et cetera. That's exactly right, and, and, and I think there's more we can do and build on that now that we've, we've got that platform and it's been invested in so much, and as that's adopted, which we expect it to be substantially over the, over the coming year, uh, you know, there's a lot in services that we're going to build on top of that, and that's where my, my comment earlier on, on DevOps is, as a DevOps platform is built there, that's going to be very attractive to people to you know, speed up their, 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 their flexibility of development into production. And um, yeah, so we're going to build um, Seamus, a service arrangement around that. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really sure appreciate it. I want to ask you the final question. Uh, share with the folks out there, uh, in your own words, the future of uh, services. I mean, because this is what you're really talking about yeah. is this new transition is a shift 
it's happening rapidly. Just quickly share, what is the next generation future of technology and technology services? Well, I think we know that the, the future in IT is, is a hybrid world. Speed, flexibility is just going to be taken for granted. Uh, our services, you know, historically, have been really about looking after your infrastructure, your, 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 your products, keeping them up and running. Um, so it'll still be about that, but now it's going to be about a partner who uh, not just deploys your infrastructure, helps you manage it, um, but here it's going to be about helping you solve your, your business problems. Uh, there'll be a disaggregation of just the hardware support and the infrastructure and software support to more um, solving business problems with you. That's, that, that, that's the essential change for so The support arrangements are going to be at a data center level, but on your premises and, and broadly off premises as well. Seamus Dunn, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really welcome. appreciate seeing you again, sharing with you the, uh, your expertise and insights into what's happening in the trenches. Uh, a lot of change, good change. This is theCUBE, we're extracting that data, sharing that with you. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>